It's like Indiana Jones, but with bikes and vans and fucking steep roads. This is me, Tom, and this is my van, Avanda. This video series follows me travelling all the way around Portugal, living out of my van and having adventures on the way. I mean, Friday afternoon on the M25, I'm asking for trouble. But not the greatest start. And then the weather, once we got past the M25, gave me a proper British send-off. Rained, miserable. It got me thinking, this is why I'm going to Portugal for the winter. Get out of England when the weather's at its worst. We hit the ferry and on we go. I booked the ferry fairly last minute. So there was no cabins, there was just reserved seats. And reserved seats are basically slightly reclining seats in a room of a lot of other people, which when you've got to sleep two nights like that, resulted in pretty terrible night's sleep. In fact, most people on the chairs just found places on the floor or benches. This was my second night. And that was a, that, that was a dream spot. That was a dream spot compared to the first night, which was just on the floor. It also made for a very interesting run. I mean, one thing about me is I've run every day now for over three years. And this is one concern I had with taking the ferry, is that I'm going to have to fit a run into it somehow. And this is how I did it, running up and down the deck with the wind blowing my face. It was uh, out of necessity, but it was quite enjoyable actually. No one really up there, by myself. Beautiful run. Anyway, we hit Santander, a long old ferry ride, but it got me really close to Portugal and saved a massive long drive from Calais. Now what was quickly apparent was how amazing the Spanish roads were. They were all immaculate. I mean, it was Sunday, so maybe there's less people driving, but I basically didn't see any cars, apart from that one that just went past the screen, and that other one there, that's another one. But other than those two cars, I saw basically zero cars. After a quick outing out of the town, we went up, up, up into the mountains, and you can see there, a bit of snow. Snow on the side, I couldn't believe it. It was so warm, I thought, how is the snow? But then quickly, we moved into the farmlands. And the farms are just vast. And, and what was quite interesting about the farms compared to the British farms is that there's no hedges. There just seemed to be like the odd little ditch, but just like endless, endless farms that you could just see across the landscape. It was quite, it's quite impressive, but not exactly a place I really wanted to stop as there wasn't that much to explore here. I wanted to try and plough on quite quick down to the, uh, a national park, which I had my eye on. I was using this great app, um, it's called Park for Night, which shows you all the park spots that people use, or where, where you can camp up. It's a really useful app, so I was, I, I've been using that for the whole trip, and previous trips, and it's fantastic for finding little, little great little hidey holes. I mean, watching this back, it's making me realise I need to wash my windscreen a little bit more, because it's really dirty. I mean, I can blame the ferry. But I'll get on top of it. Anyway, we found our way into the national park. I stuck some basically the B roads or the, the no non motorway roads all the way there. I just wanted to get a better feel for the country, um, and it was it was it was nice. They were they were perfectly fast as well. You didn't have to slow down through the few villages. It was getting late, so as soon as I get there, I was going to have to get out and run. Run's done. And here's my sight for the night. I mean, what a spot! First day. It looks like quite a professional spot. You can even buy water, 100 litres for 5 euros. I think I've got enough for tonight, although I might need a little bit for a shower. And what a view. Look at that. Incredible. And it's free. Oh, don't get this in England. My essential adventurer's beard is still a work in progress. Right, it's time to learn how to ride a bike again. It's going to be a tough one because it looks pretty hilly as well. So it's been a while, but I'm going to get fit, strong. Roads are just incredible in Spain. This is like a national road, like an A road in the UK. There's nobody on it. It's immaculate. There's no potholes. 
It makes me fall in love with cycling again. Fantastic. After my uh, ride that day, I quickly cracked on to try and get to the start of the N2, which is in Portugal. And it's the, the start of this really long road that basically goes the whole length of Portugal. It's like the Route 66 of Portugal. And it was going to be the main focus of the, the starting point of my adventure, conquering the whole of the N2, which would take me all the way to the bottom of the country. I popped into the visitor centre here um, and picked up the route book, which is called the N2 like road book. And it shows you all the places to go along the route and all the tourist attractions, which is quite useful. And then from the castle, I looked down at my van and saw how dirty my solar panels were. And all this sort of dust had settled on me. So when I found, got back down there, I tried to clear them off. I want to get maximum wattage into my, uh, into my battery so I can sustain that fridge. It's been a nice little, nice little clean. This is my second night location in, in Chavez, at the back of a steak restaurant overlooking the Mill Falls. It was meant to be. Start of the end two. This is it. At a McDonald's and a Burger King. Of course, like any great road. I deviated a little bit off the uh, the end two. I found a nice little spot on this app, apart for night in the mountains. It should be, it should be a good little beautiful spot. Like my, the last bit of driving might be quite hard to get there. I've just chopped up a fuel as well. I've made absolutely cracking progress. I got on one tank. I went all the way from Cambridge to Portsmouth on the ferry, across the Santander. Obviously, that's not my fuel. Santander, all the way to the N2 with a stop off on the way I think it's just over 500 miles and I still had a quarter of a tank left I mean it was reading 300 miles to go so it's really ticked along when, you, when the roads are so smooth and you're not really braking and stopping the fuel economy is incredible I just keep going for, for ages it's not like this when I drive in the UK but yeah hopefully find a nice spot tonight in the mountains I've got a bottle of wine just popped an Audi bottle of wine for one a nice little dinner and hopefully it'll be a nice spot to run and run and ride if it's really nice I might stay a couple of nights but we'll see what it's like when I get there all right catch you later road I have got to come back on my bike and ride this part of me also would love to be in like a little little nippy car that could just like whiz around these corners like Colin McRae in my van I've got to be slow and steady especially as my uh, fridge is sort of just balancing on on my sofa at the moment because I've not found a ratchet strap to strap it down if I waz around the corner a bit too fast it's gonna go flying so I can just enjoy it slowly at the moment, but it would be good. It would be very good in a nice little sporty car. What, what, what a little, little road. Incredible. As much as the roads are incredible and really enjoyable to drive, I also realized when I was getting there, I was gonna try and do a bike and a run. Um, I had enough time for both, I, I hoped. Um, but it was going to be a tough one because the terrain looked nothing but up and down. Look at the view. I had a little stop. Half because my brakes were going to get hot on that descent. It's so little, small and a lot of brake work. Two. I just, I just had to stop. We're in the wine country, look, wine. Wine everywhere. It's amazing. Old Avanda, he's strong that Avanda, he's a beast. I'd been using Garmin to plot my route, so asking my watch, plot me a route that's this long, and it had been really good in the first couple of days. And um, so I thought I'd give Strava a go at plotting a route. Um, here's my location for the third night, a beautiful, it had all the facilities, it was spot on. Right, Strava's time at courses today. 
and Strava reckons we can go up here. I mean, I need a frigging grappling hook to get up here. That is like 45%, if not more. Strava's having a laugh. An old hiker bike. The extreme terrain and hiker bikes meant that I basically finished my run in darkness that day. But then I had a nice meal to finish off day three on the slopes of the Juro Vineyards. <laughs>